Welcome back to Waiting on the Trade, the Dream Journal. I'm Patrick Fitzgerald Fleck, and as always, I'm joined by Matthew Ledger. Hello. And Michael Drew. I'm sorry, guys. I keep coming back. (laughs) This week, we are discussing the 10th and final question mark volume of the Sandman. All right, Matt, let's hear that synopsis. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared for Mike's sincere apology. I need a second. Gotta take it in stride. Watch me in the gut a little bit there. Um, in the wake, most of reality gathers in the dreaming to mark Morpheus's passing, and the Endless officially welcome a new dream to their ranks. The volume in the series ends with three epilogues centered around the theme of carrying on or choosing not to in the face of loss and strife. Guys, we did it. That was super impressive. Good job. Me? I wrote this yeah. yesterday, man. Good job. Some of us prepare. Oh, oh, you already apologized, Matt. Stop. You're not going to get the more sincerity, guys. I don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> He's peaked. So the best it gets. Before we get into the real discussion questions, how do you guys feel having arrived at the end of The Sandman? I don't know if I want to die <laughs> or if I want to keep on living. Mm. Okay. And I have to make a choice. Mm-hmm. And I'm not happy. But it's fine. I'm looking back to see when we started this now, because I meant to do this I, earlier today and I didn't. When we started the series, I think uh, I did not imagine it taking us this long. As long as it did. Well, <laughs> you know, stuff happened. Things did occur. Yeah. August of 2021. Really? <laughs> um, April of 2023. That's not that bad. It's fine. Um, it's it's about every three months, right? Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. Keep in I don't mind, know. It won't come out till May, also. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Fine. By May. This is probably my third full read through. I think. I'm gonna say maybe fourth. I'm, I'm thinking it's third. What about you guys? How many times have you made it through this? Also, probably third for me. I would think mm. once in Australia, think... once here, once here again. Are we? Are we? I think we're having a threesome right now, guys. Because I think it's my third time as well. You know, three is a significant number in the sand, man. <laughs> Maybe we were the kindly ones all along. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. No, I got it. I got it. Wizard World. I think it was the mm-hmm. same Wizard World where I met Edward James almost, too. I, Sounds right. Yeah. 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 I remember buying it. And then I powered through it because that's what I do. And then I put it down and then I picked it up once again and now here we are. Three. I also got the like a few of the death the death because death is awesome. Death is the way to go. The character not I would hope so. Mike circling back to his question from earlier about whether he wants to continue living. (laughs) (laughs) I mean death is just so fun. She's so great. Okay, sorry. Actually I think I yeah, I sent that to you guys. I was investigating Reddit threads to try to pull together a question for this one because I feel like this one I had like a lot of different angles I was kind of thinking about it from. And I wanted to come mm-hmm. up with a good question because it's our second to last volume. Spoilers. So I was Spoiler. poking around Reddit threads and just like, I don't think I thought as much as maybe I should have about the fact that like so, the Endless also very much embodied the opposite of themselves. Like. Mm-hmm. Especially in the Hob chapter in this one, Hob's like, this run fair fucking sucks. And she's like, it's great. Everyone's doing everything. It's wonderful. It's just like really enjoys people living, which I mean, we've seen before, right? But having encountered the Reddit thread and then circling back to look at Death list- listing off all of the like slightly cheesy things that she really loves about Ren Fairs, even though like she is should potentially be more jaded than Hob, was pretty fun and worth thinking about. Yeah, I think I had similar thoughts as well. I just, she's, she's always been very like, Oh, not sing songy. That's too far. She's just always been the bright light, and it's. I don't know. I'm. There's a lot to be sad about in this now. Like the story is about grief, but I think saying goodbye to death is is my is that, that's the that's the hardest goodbye. For me. <laughs> You're talking about you as a reader not being able to read about the character yeah. anymore. Oh, Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, Maybe gosh. we'll see her again in I'm another sure. decent. Yeah. I'm sure she shows up. Runs into Lex Luthor once. Good times. Really? Yeah. You better link 
because I want to see it. I don't put links in these notes, but <laughs> I can Back tell in. you it's part of the post Blackest Night arc in Action Comics where Lex was the main character and he's trying to find, um, I think, a black power ring to like replicate the powers he had as like an orange lantern or whatever. And anyways, he ends up meeting death. Threw her into a Green Lantern spinoff? What the hell? So, yeah, I mean, again, Pat, they go on the shelf with the DC Universe bullshit. The Martian mm. Manhunter is here. Batman is here. Superman Super- is here. The Trench Coat Brigade is here. Dark side, dark side sitting in a pew. Yeah, I caught that for the first time. Let's read through. Say, we discussed maybe during one of our question as favorite cameos, and Dark Side just randomly sitting in a pew is probably mine. That is excellent. I think you do see Wonder Woman too in the uh, in the pews somewhere. Oh, I didn't notice the Wonder Woman. But there was a moment in my in my past read throughs where I sat and actually looked through it, and I I do recall seeing one. Or I could be making it up. Who knows? It may just be my dementia. Could quickly be. touch my on delirium. the fact that Clark sees himself as Clark and Bruce sees himself as like a slightly even more terrifying looking Batman. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to point that out. <laughs> John Jones is his Martian himself. Clark, who is Clark, and Batman's Batman. Although I guess Martian Manhunter's not in like full alien form now that I think about That's it. That's true, he's in his more humanoid. Although I guess he probably wouldn't have been as recognizable if not. True, yeah. yeah. One of the only characters to be in the first arc of Sandman and the last arc of Sandman, the Martian Manhunter. Again, it goes on the DC Universe show. <laughs> I just need to remind you every once in a while. Yeah. God, that panel with, with the three of them, though. It's so good. For not having anything to do with the story, they tell a story with that panel. Yeah, it is mm-hmm. a very... <laughs> yes, Patrick, they do. It's great. It is a very nice, like, ragging on the fact that at the time, Martian Manhunter had never appeared in other media. <laughs> Don't you dream about <laughs> when you're just an actor? Doesn't everyone? Now the Martian Manhunter's been in, like, what, seven seasons of Supergirl or whatever? So the joke's not going Oh, good. really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, spoilers, Pat. If you're ever going to watch the CW Supergirl. <laughs> that, that wasn't going to happen, so no worries. I knew that he had a cameo in Batman v Superman. No, one of those. I think it's in the... Justice oh, League? God, fuck me, the extended version of Justice League. There it is. You made me think about the extended version of Justice League, Pat. Have you watched that? Oh, my. No. What are you doing? No, I've never watched it, but you made me think about it, and now I'm sad. I think we should watch it. Bring back the Snyderverse. Oh, God, I knew Mike was going to troll me. <laughs> so now that we talked about a thing that, it. that saps my will to live, <laughs> should we take <laughs> my discussion question first? Want to do yours first? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Mike has been trying to seg into it a couple times, and we haven't quite taken it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him... <laughs> I'm going to follow what his... Do you, uh, what what makes you want to keep living there, Matt? Yeah, I mean, uh, thanks for stealing my question, wow. Mike. That's fine. <laughs> I could explain some of the context. So initially, one of the questions I had pitched to you guys out of like three was what makes you feel like you're dying? Because <laughs> for me, this volume is so much about the interplay. Like people see Morpheus having made the choice he made to essentially kill himself, right? Like we talked about how it was basically suicide by Rube Goldberg machine last volume. Mm-hmm. And I think various characters in this volume see that and kind of like, especially long-lived and or <laughs> like fan characters who have already died, kind of like Matthew, like see that and they're like, well, you know, like, what am I doing here? Like, is it worth carrying on? And even in two, like all three of the epilogues, I would argue, are basically about this question of like, what, like, what are you living for? Like, what are you, like, are you striving to achieve something? Is there something you haven't done? Is Are there new experiences you want to do? Like, why continue living? I think Hobb does it. I think that, oh gosh, I keep forgetting his name, the advisor in the desert story, mm-hmm. like, has been exiled from his, like, his home and his family and is still like, well, I'm going to keep doing it because he's very much like Old Dream, actually. Um, and then the Shakespeare one is actually really interesting because he kind of is making the choice to set down the pen after he finishes Dream's final play and then, like, dies shortly thereafter. So I think, like, so much of this volume is about people considering like what is like what is the point slash is it worth it to carry on so because drama i guess i don't know why like the first 
variation of this question I I was looking at was like <laughs> what like saps your will to live like what makes you feel like throwing in the towel I think maybe because that's the cho the choice that Morpheus ends up ended up making mm -hmm. but that kind of sucked <laughs> I think you I think you probably recognize that oh, you that think that's too. a downer it's fine it's, it's a fine. bit of a downer right like so yeah. I came back at it, and I was like, no, let's talk about good things. We talk about depressing stuff on this podcast more than we should, probably. <laughs> so let's talk about good Sorry, things. Guys. Like, what are the, I mean, it's not you, man. <laughs> I mean, we talked about, back. like, with Simon, we recently talked about how there's a fundamental flaw in the American dream. <laughs> that was a God, solid God, where was I? I want to take part of that. Jeez. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I missed it. So well, this time we're going to do the good stuff. We're going to do the stuff that Death was talking about, where it's funny people running around in costumes and it's neat. So, like, what are the things that make you, like, want to keep living? Like, what are the things you enjoy doing? What else do you want to achieve? What have you not done yet? Me, I want to write a book, like a real book, and publish it. That's one of the things. You wrote, you wrote a book, friend. Okay. Well, I, mean, I did write it, but it's not published. And, like, you wrote, like, a series of short stories and published that on Amazon. But it's mm, digital. It's not the same thing. Like Digital a physical book. That's a thing. Okay. That's a good reason. I like that. I got other stuff too. But I figure we can take it in turns. We can go one at a time until we run out one person runs out of things. That's not actually what we should do, but I mean, for me of course it's my kids and my, you know, seeing them grow up and watching uh, hoping that they get to experience adventures. Good adventures. So that's I mean, I guess that's the answer that our most parents would ideally have. But uh, I don't know. That's they're they're a lot of fun and they're great kids. They're Mike, great you just kids. made me think of the time that you said parents shouldn't have children. What a parents great shouldn't have children. That makes me want to keep living. Like, every once in a while, Mike Drew will say something profound. <laughs> Mike Drewism, yes. I, I try not. It really is bad when I'm the profound one. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that. I'd I'd be I feel like I'd be a bad parent if that one. So it's not not even just because it's you gotta. I'm sorry, they I I love them both. They're excellent, excellent. Oh, I'm little glad adventure. you apologize and, for loving your children, Mike. I was going to ask you. To you have children. my sincerest apologies. Uh, just, I, like I, I do believe you are a parent who goes. should have children, though. <laughs> just so you know, it's it's fine. I'll allow it. We could. I could believe it or not. Right now, I could segue us into a 20 minute discussion about how the fuck how fuck the American dream is, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, would you say no, that's Mike. one of the reasons you have for living? Is I mean, to... some smart people have to have kids. Otherwise, where the fuck are we headed? Anyways, Patrick, take this, take it, take it away before I go. Before I go I further. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is a tough question for me because it's been a rough year, you guys. It's been... I know, man. It I know. Been. So yeah, um... I can give you my second answer. I can do a minute. If it's your wife, I wouldn't work for me. I'm sorry. No, I mean, well, my second answer is you. Oh, God. <laughs> Be weird. Disney World. Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, that is not. That is oh, God. What a fun reason yeah. to live. They're, they're remaking like Christmas Family Robinson. It's going to be a new TV show. That's going to lead to them redoing oh, the TV. Are they really? Ron Moore is on it, man. Ron Moore. Battlestar Galactica, Swiss Family Robinson. I'm all fucking for it. It's going to be great gonna be great i like that mike also, went from i could go for 20 minutes about the flaw in the american <laughs> dream to i love disney, disney world, world. <laughs> get me to florida baby i'm I mean, part of the problem <laughs> fuck florida this disney world that, get, see the rest of florida did to disney and i'd be fine with it. i don't want that <laughs> like, disney disney is still a giant preparation like, when will Disney just assert its like dominance over all of Florida and become like the ruling it's body? It's happening. It's <laughs> happening. <laughs> they Florida tried to take that take over a panel and Disney's like, no. <laughs> we laugh at your laws and have lawyered our way out of them. Enjoy. The mouse will have his due. All right, Pat. We've talked about true. Disney a lot. You've had time to think. <laughs> <laughs> I would say stuff like this. Friends. That's I was also I was also going to do the sappy answer of this. I do really look forward to this like every month or two weeks or whatever schedule or on like the podcast. Yeah. It is fun. I, yeah. I, I enjoy it. Not quite as good as kicking you guys' ass at, at X now, but it's good. 
<laughs> I mean, that was also a thing I was like, I was kicking back and forth is like, since Kat and I have moved back to Wisconsin, like we have actually gotten to have a lot more actual FaceTime with our friends again. And that has been very nice. <laughs> so it does make a difference. It definitely does. I'm very happy that as adults, we have, you know, not too far to travel to see each other. And by not too far to travel, not to fucking California. <clears throat> I don't think I we mean, made it out there, so. Slightly with you there, man. <laughs> you made it there via the internet, so it's fine. The internet. <laughs> there you go. So I took, the, I took the sap answer, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. I mean, the sap answer is a good answer, man. Like, I want a Miata. You want a Miata? <laughs> yeah. That's another reason to live. I want a, I want a Miata. At some car. point in my life, I'm going to own a Miata. It's going to be the great. Car, the car? The yeah. car. It's a little fucking convertible. It looks cute and cute. Put the top what? down, drive around. It'll be nice. What color Miata would you get? I don't know. Silver or red? Okay. All right. Depending on, the, depending on the mood. I could see you driving around in a red Miata. Yeah. I'm looking at a picture of it now. Be a fat old white guy driving around in a Miata. It's going to be great. <laughs> Pat, you have to keep living... Because we're going to publish a board game at some point, too, or a card game, and I need your help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, next December, we're going to go to the Madison board game testing group convention thing that I found last December, <laughs> randomly. The YouTube algorithm has started feeding me 40k miniature game. Oh, no, don't do that. Don't it's, listen to that. <laughs> it has started to... Pique my interest, unfortunately. So we'll see how that goes. No, Pat. <laughs> we had that idea back in college of having a comic book store combined with the arcade, and I, I still am for that. At some point, if I if we have some some money to throw around, dude, that, I was just thinking cool. the other day about like if I randomly came into a million dollar because like I don't know. I'm just like, what would I do? Because I've been writing a lot, <laughs> like. Uh, my hands are tired. <laughs> anyway, so I was like, <laughs> what would I do if I had just like like a million dollars and we paid off the house and I had like some money to just kick around? And like I would maybe house. I would I would maybe pay off your house. I'll I would so. probably open a joint comic slash coffee shop that sold just like graphic novels because I don't want to fuck with single issues. Single issues, yeah. Yeah, like I think single issues are actually cool and I like I'm glad there are shops that still sell them, but like if I opened a shop I don't think I'd want to mess around <laughs> with it. And like so many bookstores have just graphic novel shelves and do fine. So I think that's where I'd be at. But like yeah. I would I would consider doing that still. <laughs> I've still kicked that around <laughs> every once in a while. Someone's just got to feed us the startup money. Venture Capital is getting tighter. Comic store. Does not have one. Does have a game store. Although it does have I, a game store, it's Tangent. Store. It's so tough to get to that store. I always feel like it's a maze. <laughs> it is in it, it is in a very hard to get to area. It's a very pedestrian mallish. Yeah, my one is it pedestrian. It. No, it's not pedestrian. That's Are you talking trouble. about I'm bored, right? It's yeah, like full of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely not, need to drive there. No, I like I drive there and I still feel unsafe getting there. It so. doesn't have much foot traffic, I would imagine. But I wouldn't think so. But I mean, there's usually people in there when I go. So it's a great store. I'm glad they're still around. But yeah, I don't know the stress of being a small business owner. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah, why we, we have not enough probably. money that we can just lose money the whole oh, time. Okay, so in this, <laughs> we've won like a lottery or something, and this is just yeah. The thing again, this okay. is a, yeah. As long as we don't need to live off of what like profits from the store, I'm good with that. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. Like, especially considering this, like I was thinking about it in terms of Shakespeare had kind of like in the Shakespeare story, which you guys both I think didn't like as much as me, <laughs> but maybe I like it more because I write things. Just so like, fucking maybe Shakespearean. <laughs> like he's just kind of like come to the end of it. And like finished off writing, and I was like, I don't know if I'll ever finish writing. Like, I do do a lot of it currently, and I'm not sure I should do as much of it as I do. Like, I have writing for work, writing for the blog, writing for the neighborhood newsletter, <laughs> like fiction writing that I haven't. Oh, really I didn't done know you recently. did a newsletter. Like, yeah, just a couple articles, and then I did some editing. But like, like my work and two of my hop, two to three of my hobbies are writing. And I was like, maybe I should. 
dial it back <laughs> a little bit. But I don't think I'd ever, like, I don't think I'd ever quit writing in the same way that it, like, basically here they're like, Shakespeare put down his pen and never wrote again. <laughs> and then he died. And then he and died. And then he died. Because <laughs> if you don't use it, you lose it. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. He died after a night of drinking, which is the best way. No, I see myself as more of a hob, actually, for being the person who phrased the question, like, in the dark way instead of the light way originally. Like, I think I see myself as more of a hob innately, though, again, I have also had trying times, as we mentioned, semi-recently, mm. but I don't know. There's stuff to do. I'm going to go to the farmer's market on Saturday. I think the same way that Hob says his girlfriend would kill me, my wife would kill me also, so there's that. <laughs> I guess, did you guys, before we back off of my question and get to one of your guys, because I'll shut up soon. <laughs> I promise. No worries. We believe you. Um, like, did you guys kind of see that same sort of, like, central theme in the volume? Because to me, it was pretty apparent. Like, even in the, the funeral bit of it with Matthew, too, like, there's so many, pe- like, people who are, I think, I don't know. I think, in general, people use the death of another person as... A moment of reflecting on their own life and i yeah. think that's not unusual i think it's common yeah i think that's i think that's commonplace i don't think there's a one way to grieve but i i don't think that's uncommon to see something i find i do when i when i'm in that sort of a situation also didn't even mention that gilbert actually makes the the opposite choice and just decides no i'm gonna stay dead <laughs> yet he still makes an appearance in the book what a guy well, he's forced to. <laughs> <laughs> what a man. He's there I, even when he's not there. I get that one last whom in. He did. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got the same feeling. I don't know. Like Mike was saying, I, the last couple epilogue stories, not my favorite. I, it's a strange way to end. Well, not really an end, but is it a, for is the it time. Strange, though, is it like Sandman is held to be like, Cool, we did a good, like, main story. Here's some, like, random stuff to wrap it up with. (laughs) (laughs) And then here are these things. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. I don't know. That Shakespeare one had so many Neil Gaiman-isms in it where just like, what what is this bit about a corpse being dragged around? Like, did that have anything bearing on the rest of the story? No, it didn't, Neil. Didn't need to be. (laughs) Or did it? Because if Sandman had kept going, would it have not been a corpse being dragged around? Oh my Uh, god! Has Morpheus been a corpse being dragged around most of the story? He was already dead. (laughs) Just going through the Rube Goldberg steps to get there. (laughs) Gotcha, Pat. No, I still don't want it. (laughs) I think, and this is a seg towards your question, which I was not expecting to do a second, but maybe we will. That if the Shakespeare story wasn't there. It would be an actual essential missing op- like part of the story. Like it would this be is the an open- promised second play. Yeah, like this is the second play, and like you de- like we definitely needed it because otherwise, like something would have been missing from the Sandman. <laughs> like it was a a a Chekhov's pen that had to be taken down and used to write a play, or else I would have been mad. I think. Yeah, and I think that's why it's there. That is it's that either. Neil realized, or one of his editors or someone said, hey, by the way, whatever happened, which other Shakespeare play is actually Morpheus's? I know technically, like at some point earlier in the run, Neil said that he knew how it was going to end pretty soon on. Mm-hmm. I would be surprised if that this was that ending, though. I don't know. Like It, the, it feels like it would be something you might not have thought of until later on. This yeah. is all guesswork, but well, the introduction to my volume had a the I don't remember who wrote it now off the top of my head, but I believe she was saying that Neil had said early in the run, I think when they were just starting, she was telling another uh, British comic book writer that Neil said, "Yeah, I know exactly how it's going to run, and it's going to be thirty issues or sixty issues." Some it was like yeah. a much smaller. Like almost half the length of what it turned out yeah. to be, and the comic book writer like laughed and said, "Yeah, good luck." <laughs> he thinks actually, he knows how this thing's gonna end. I was actually just listening to an interview with a different creator, Declan Shelby, who's talking about like his current creator own book, and he's talking about how if the sales are good, he'd love to do like he definitely is doing a second arc. 
he definitely like he has a third arc in mind that would be the end of the story but like the more of it he does the more he's like oh this would be fun or oh that'd yeah. be cool to play with like i feel like it happens to most people who get some runway with these like these things they're like oh okay let's let's take this here and there and everywhere for a little bit and then bring it back i do i wouldn't be surprised if like the firm arc of the story was set if not immediately like relatively quickly like into volume two or something like that that would not I mean, surprise me because there yeah. are a lot of pointers that go in the direction the story is going to go even early on yeah i would say like a third or more of this is just short stories that are loosely tied to the world that neil created yeah but you know for most of them i was there for <laughs> i actually really liked morpheus and will shakespeare getting to interact at the end like i think it was a, a good wrap up i know you guys may not have enjoyed it as much but like it was just a strange uh, note to end on i don't know i felt like Hobbes story would have been a nicer conclusion Hobbes story is better and mike before we were talking said it's the best issue of the volume and i'm inclined to agree <laughs> so there is that H- Hobbes is the best issue just kind of i'm just saying facts don't don't on here, on no, here. I, I agree, Mike. <laughs> Just throwing facts down. I, I did. I do like having Morpheus, like legitimate Morpheus, in the last volume. I, I, I think it's nice to hit that we're we're ending on him. I would think it would and be it, nice not to end on him because we've moved on at this point. It's sort of weird to yeah, go back. It's yes, we have, and and we got to see Daniel in the second, like the there was the Hob Hob volume, then there's Daniel volume, then there's Morpheus, right? I, well, fine. Maybe say it. I'll say it this way. I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't you mean to. I didn't mean to. I have. <laughs> Shut him down, Matt. Shut I'm him sorry. down. I'm sorry. It's, it just yeah, it go was ahead, his story. It was his story. So it it ends on him. I I think it's it, none of this would have happened without him, and it's it's a nice b- uh, bookend on his on hit on him. Could it could I have done with the, as much of the dumb Shakespearean bullshit? Yes. Yes, I definitely could have. But ultimately having him back is like seeing So what's really interesting about that story to me is that it like kind of retroactively lets you know that Morpheus has known he's stuck for like much longer than I think we thought he knew. Like he's commissioning this play and he understands what it's about and how it contrasts with his own like personality mm-hmm. and life. And he see, and he seems sad about it, and I don't know if at the start of the story I understood that Morpheus understood how, like, stuck he was or like how sad he was. But clearly, this like this version of him that we're seeing here gets it. I like that he got Shakespeare one. <laughs> <laughs> Shakespeare's like, you're not even get, you're not even gonna drink with me, or it's gonna cut me loose. Like I'm, like I'm some schoolboy. No, you get me beer. Contract work, man. <laughs> you take your pay and you're happy. Yeah, I mean, the story itself is is fine. I just, again, and I don't even know, and Matt, I don't know if you know, was this released as the final Sandman issue? Or yeah. is this just a yeah. reshuffling? A no, this is, this is the last one, as far as I'm aware. Interesting. Because I, I feel like... Th- there was such a nice conclusion and then epilogue and then all of a sudden there's two more issues at the end (laughs) and just like and it keeps going so i initially bounced off the desert one when i had finished when i read the volume the first time for this recording just Mm -hmm. i think because the art style and like the pacing changes so much from the the previous four issues in this volume. I was like, ah, can't do this right now. Bounced off of it. But I do really like that one, if only because, like, getting to see both dreams in the same story is really cool. (laughs) Oh, because he meets him earlier and then Daniel later. Yeah, so I enjoy that one, and I think that's a cool... Like, its place in the story, like, being after the wake, makes a lot of sense to me, because... We've seen one dream off, and now the other dream is here, and this like gives us just like a quick moment of contrast between the two. Yeah, I guess I could have done without. <laughs> it was <laughs> fine fair. where we ended, and I could see that there's a uh, they needed to fi- figure out the loose 
uh, string with Shakespeare with the second place. So that's why the Tempest is a thing. But Exiles was just felt felt like the Hobbits finally returned to uh, the Shire, and then someone did bring on its crowned, and then I was reading online too of like, yeah, the Sandman, the the Lord of the, the Lord of the Rings of comics, <laughs> and then <laughs> ends four times. They go off in the Grey Havens, yeah, and then. It's just like, I don't know, the the ending of of the like the wake itself, even before they got to Hob stories, is such like a poetic ending, like and then you woke up or something like that. And then you woke up. Yeah, yeah is, there are yeah. four endings here. There's the ending it's, of the actual wake. There's the Hob ending, and then there's the other two stories. <laughs> well, just like the poetic nature, like it's called the wake, and it has so many meanings, and every like almost every single instance is like explored in the course of those three yeah. chapters literally we wake at the end it's just like perfect and we're done and then no we're not we're gonna keep going I'm like no so i don't know i would have maybe trimmed the fat a little bit on this one but anyways that's that said. <laughs> what Trim that's always, the Shakespeare is always no i'm just saying for like this volume but if there were Matt, you you make me you make me put my foot in my own mouth. How dare you! <laughs> it's the it's the podcast where we say each other's questions and mock them <laughs> while we say them. Oh, dare you! No, there question? are still. What is your question, Mike? There are still stories untold in the Sandman universe. Partly because we've already hinted that we're going to be reading an entire volume that explores more, or at least gives more details in the events that we've already seen. But do you guys have other stories that you would like to explore that weren't fully or at all? Is over? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, Good. Mm. It's a prequel. Yeah, Overture is a prequel. Is, is that the one where it's just standalone stories from the different... No, that endless, is Endless Nights, which we will not Nights. read because we already read it. There's an it's episode true. in the podcast feed. Go get it, listeners. Okay, very good. Very good. And Michael. <laughs> and Next. Michael. I frustrated. <laughs> we, uh, we, we power rank all of the issues. It's very exciting. I, I was there. I'm, I think. Wasn't you I? Weren't, I don't you know. weren't there. there. It's just me and Pat. <laughs> uh, the delirium story is impossible to read on a digital device, <laughs> it turns out. That makes it sense. may have infect, affected my enjoyment of it. <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, Fair right, the desire story is pretty awesome. I think that one, that one was probably my favorite out of it. But we recently got a YouTube comment from a person who really likes the desire story. Apparently, so you were not alone, Mike. Oh, really? It, it, yeah. It's the best story out of the bunch. It, it I mean, really it's is. It's not true, but that's okay. You know it's what, Pat? There, but it's okay to be best. wrong. I'm I'm glad that you take pride in your opinion. <laughs> if you reread the volume, you'll come back to me and say, "No, Pat, you're right. That wasn't the best." No, Pat, you're you were. Uh, no, 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 like, no, 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 no. You should reread it and then come back to us. I'll reread it and come back. To you. you know damn well it's going to take me two months. To Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> fix Mike, it. don't yeah, read it. Read Just it. read Overture next, Mike. <laughs> Please. Fine. Fine. <laughs> but anyways, are there other like characters or events or things hinted at but not fully explained that you would have liked to be enlightened? So I have a few actually, and I actually quickly read overture today because i wanted to make check and make sure that the thing i the one that i'm most interested in there is like is touched upon an overture but it's not the the bit of it that i want is not which is i want to see <laughs> more of why dream and desire just fucking hate each other <laughs> mm. or at least strongly dislike each other right like mm. Because that's so key to this entire story, if not the entire story, like a good piece of it, right? Hinges upon the fact that, like, desire is trying to fuck with dream. And, like, we kind of understand why, right? Like, they're just, like, sort of at odds because dream can make whatever he wants. And so, like, the, like, the act of desire is not really meaningful to him but at the same time he's the moodiest boy in the world <laughs> so he does actually like desire stuff but then he's done with it i don't know like you uh, the concepts the of... themselves are so similar right 
like to yeah, dream for something of, right? is to desire for it. At least you can have dreams at that least, are. Yeah, in a way, at least, for sure. What are your dreams? And that's usually another synonym for what do you desire? But we also see in the, it's what, three Septembers and a January or whatever with the Emperor of the United mm-hmm. States, where like, by having a man believe in his dreams so, like, completely he's just freed from desire and and like i think that says something about their relationship too but like there's no actual like origin point that we see of why they're so like they butt heads so hard Mm -hmm. i would like to see that and we do get like we get another moment where their relationship is like a little troubled in overture, in overture? Hmm. but it's not the original moment because even when he's when dream is telling the story of that moment he's like well previously i fu- like i fucked up or whatever i don't know if he I, he obviously doesn't say he fucked up because it's old dream so he would never admit to that but no. well i mean in endless nights they have they talk they interact yeah and i think that's, that's like even... millions of years in the past so. yeah so I'm not sure if that is actually no, that's not it either. Because even there, they're like already buddies. No, they're already right? they don't like each other, and yeah. then they like each other a little bit, and then they really don't like each other. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> and I might have more to say about it when we get through Overture because there's other, mm-hmm. there are other twists, but like again, the the story I want does not exist, which is like what happened originally. <laughs> Because I think it's so much of a like a key point to like there's entire volumes where the volume is like and desire fucked with dream and he almost died as a result or he did die as a result. Or he did die. Yeah, for sure. What have you, Mike? You got any that come to mind? You would of course ask me this question, and I have nothing to say because I mean, I'm just like I. To be fair, I asked I, you it a couple of days ago, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> you know what? You know what? Punch him in the gut. Sincere apologies are for losers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to know, like, this is probably, maybe it would be very boring. Oh. And so uh, I'll, I'll accept that if it is. But I, I do kind of want to see the end. <laughs> like, does death outlast destiny? Is there, uh, like, let's, Let's carry this through to the inevitable conclusion of, of time. You put the, the great mystery explained to you? I do. I want to know the ending. <laughs> that was what I was thinking about, actually. Like, I was imagining just, like, a page of just, like, infinite blackness, and then eventually it becomes panels, and then, like, there's a panel, like, you, pa- there's a page turn, and then death appears in one of the panels and just kind of wraps it up. And then, like, maybe the page becomes white and that's done? I don't know. I was thinking that could be a cool story. Like, you, there's a lot of cool illustration stuff you could do with that. Like, does death come for destiny, or does destiny just close his book and be done? Like, I, I don't... <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I they're saying know. this, that death will take destiny's book. And that'll be the end of it. <sighs> I don't know. I think it'd be fun. And that, and more, or alternatively, very boring. Who knows? But I think it that that's one that I could, I could read. I'd read it. I could take you like, two weeks. And I'd read it. <laughs> two weeks, please, Mike. <laughs> we know the truth. <laughs> I could see something like a reverse, like Big Bang kind of thing, like everything dies out and then starts over again, kind of thing. Like death becomes life. Yeah, that's the problem with that one is you have to figure out how the universe <laughs> ends, which is a pretty big ask. I feel like. But it would be anyone can do it. Neil Gaiman could do it. Yeah, mine is similar to to Matt's, where I think more background on the endless. Like in this volume, they give they hint at more of the um, despair, the original despair, and what happened to them. And like, what happened to the person who killed them also? <laughs> yeah, D- Daniel, or the new dream, is explaining to Lita, like, the man who killed the first despair had much better reasons of doing it, and he will never stop, like, being tortured for the rest of his existence. The universe, yeah. yeah. So, like, 
that was intriguing to me. It's like, oh, okay. How does one, like you could uh, guess what despair took from him, but like, how does one kill despair? And that's a story that I would like to know more about. Well, for sure. the man's name was John Wick and despair took his dog. His dog. <laughs> Oh, no, that, yeah, that was an interesting one, too. It's like, I don't think we ever see original Despair. But like, did, did he make Despair no, laugh? Right? Like, how do you kill Despair? And like, what did Despair's funeral look like? Because this funeral was held in the Dreaming, because Dream died. I was thinking about that, too, actually. It's like, what would funerals for the other... Of, of is it just like a like? bunch of people in nooses? What does the, like, what who, does the funeral who, of Despair look who like? Who attends and how? Yeah. <laughs> like, Desire. Is it just all the suicide victims are there for the funeral? Yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I was trying to think of that. I was like, nah, that's one of those things that I don't... And, like, are all the well other... Enough. Yeah, are all the other Endless the original Endlesses? Like, are... Like, the only other ones that have shifted to a new point of view, which I thought was a very cool way to explain the death of one Endless to the next, is it's just a change of view, perspective. Yeah, I mean the thing that messes with that too is this is another one i was thinking of is like oh, delirium yeah. is delight yes like, that's another one it's like what happened one, but like something like it's they cool. reference it numerous times that there was some an event a thing happened to delight to turn her from delight into a more like raw like a problem like the more intense more dangerous delirium yeah what happened? Like, what, what, what happened? It's sort of cool that we don't know. So maybe I don't need like a hundred percent of the story, but like a glimpse into like more of the endless is what I want. So can I tell you that there is no explanation in Overture, which is good. I think honestly, like I yeah. agree with you that I don't think there is probably one that's satisfying. So it's probably best to leave it, but you do get to see actual delight for a second. Well, you see her in Endless Night as well. She's Delight. No. She's a little girl playing underneath the table. I mean, that story was unreadable, so I don't know. That's not true. <laughs> that story that is, was unreadable. Matthew, that is the best story in Endless Night. It's the dream story. It's il- illustrated beautifully. Reread it. It's amazing. You see oh, Delight. the dream one. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, it's not the Delirium one. Delirium, it. she's Delirium. Two years after we did that one. The delirium one is Barnabas getting a bunch of other mentally challenged people to go and save delirium from her own like Headspace, world. Yeah. yeah. Good old Barnabas. Which was cool. What happened? Oh, can I just delirium. say that? Matthew's introduction of dog. Dog was funny. They named all the endless and then guess what and dog? his name was? Dog. <laughs> Beautiful. Well done. Man. It was Pretty good. good. They made me Exhale. I got it. I, ex- I exhaled with, with passion. It was a passionate exhale. There you go. Before we move on, the only loose end from the, the kindly ones no. that I yeah. think I care about no. and wasn't resolved to any satisfaction is what is going on in hell? <laughs> is anything going on in hell? What is, like... I don't think they, anything's going on. Well, I'll they see there. I was about to go down a tirade on explaining the plot of the good place, but I'll still shut up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cause like whole, go ahead. The, the angels appear in this volume and mm-hmm. like, they were going to like talk to Lucifer about something in the kindly ones. They and wanted Lucifer really, to like, take hell back. Yeah. But like, because something was happening and why? Like, oh, I didn't really think of that. I just think they just desperately want to go back to heaven. <laughs> the city of glass or whatever they call it. Could be. Could be. But uh, yeah, I, I thought, I I thought it was just like hell is it. just now a different type of hell. <laughs> that they actually yeah. are trying to redeem you and that makes yeah, it Yeah, I thought they were actually worse. like, they were, they were having a good time. <laughs> or at least one of them was. Oh no, I think both of them Dumas absolutely or hate it. Or whatever their names are. Yeah. Dumas? Is that what it is? I don't remember. Pretty sure Duma is right. I think Ramiel is the other one, and I'm sure the one that doesn't talk that. ever yeah. and is driving yeah. the other one insane by not talking. Uh, they're funny. Gian, you, it's great. <laughs> and they don't touch the ground. At least the one doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool. 
I just want more endless, more it's mostly endless, endless stuff, right? Though, like I looked through just like quickly synopses of the other volumes to like see if there were side characters that I cared about or wanted more from. And I was like, I think most of them actually got wrapped up okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why that one issue in Endless Nights is amazing because it gives you background, more background of the endless. I think yeah. you see original despair, who talks about how wonderful it was to kill Krypton. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't know. More. I want more, Neil. There was. Write me Hold ten on. more volumes about about the Sandman. <laughs> about a different endless. I mean, there are ongoing Sandman comics right now, so you could true. those, I guess. This is true. But why? I mean, We're I'm not recording a podcast. Those, I'm not going to read them. We could. We <laughs> have them, I have them listed above our show notes. Yeah. I, had just, gonna make I had just thought Shit. of one side story that I actually cared about. Now I forgot it. Oh, <laughs> really, I cared about it oh, no. a lot. All right, Mike, what's that question that you... So that question I got, yeah. we're going there? Okay. Mm-hmm. So my original question, without any other influence from any other members of this conversation. Quite unique, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Entirely yeah. unique, without any... Yeah. Fuck you guys. It, <laughs> I worded it <laughs> specifically so it was different than you get. Fuck you. Anyways. Literally written above what you put. Yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. You say you came oh. up with it today, but I came up with it two days ago <laughs> and you read it, so I don't feel like Except that's you wrote it differently. Did. You wrote it differently. Commented so, on it, and then today said, you know, I thought up a new question. That's a great idea. Oh, oh what the talk Sometimes about. I feel like I'm Homer. <laughs> I, do, I do identify with him more as I get older. Anywho, um, so the way Matt wrote it, which is inferior, is how do you think the dreaming will change with Daniel in charge? Um, you know, Mike, you never I, actually wrote it as a question. I was going to write it in the document. You, the you can write document, it as, a, as you had written it, and you had not written question. it as a question. So it I wrote it as I wrote it. have a question mark to be a question. I'm demanding commentary. And that is, how do you... That's the same one you wrote. Um, <laughs> c- compare and contrast the two dreams we see in the last two issues, Daniel and Marcus. There. Daniel Look, I'm Marcus? demanding. I'm not. I'm not asking a question. I'm demanding input. See, that's how. That's how Homer do. Well, one has a lot of white, and the other one has a lot of black. Right. Well, well, that's it. it. We did it. We're done. <laughs> that's a wrap. And we're done. Put a bow on it. <laughs> one has black hair. One has white hair. Yes. And one's got. A green stone, and the other one's got a red stone. Why the uh, fuck is the stone a different color? I'm confused. It's a different it. like, stone. Oh, stone, man. Hey, we got to blow up the emerald. Like, what, what, why is it an emerald now? Why wasn't it a ruby? Because uh, he's got a bunch of different stones. There, there's, the stones. there's more side stories. Let's talk about all the other stones. Yeah, I don't know if we even get a comprehensive list of stones. I mean, there's the we rose don't. one from my game of you. Mm-hmm. The one with the cuckoo. Mm-hmm. The ruby, mm-hmm. the emerald. Mm-hmm. Somewhere there's a peridot, probably, because peridot's the best one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. a Steven Universe oh my one. god. <laughs> That's a crossover we need. Holy shit. Yes. Done. All right. I know what our next podcast series is. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. I'm in. I'm confused. You lost me. Oh, Mike, you'd love it. I think you would, actually. I'm still just trying to wander down whatever the avenues of my mind are that had like an actual side story that I was <laughs> interested in. So you guys go first. Well, I mean, there right. is the the different color coding of them, but I mean, obviously, it looks like Daniel has a more positive outlook on things than Morpheus did. No, and like is more forgiving, right? Can you imagine mm-hmm. Morpheus like? blessing Lyda and sending her on her way as opposed to throwing her in hell for thousands of years. <laughs> right. He threw his lover in hell different she jilted him. Yeah. His lover spent eternity in hell because she didn't say yes when he asked to marry. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling that Lyda would be uh, what was that guy that pushes the stone up the mountain and then he has it f- fall back down. And Is it the it there we go. Yeah, there, yeah, That would be the easy. That'd be her best case scenario. 
much more forgiving to the point where I'm like, are the nightmares going to be gentler? <laughs> Will people not have as bad nightmares? Maybe. It's possible. He pets his. He pets the door. The doorkeepers, and that makes me the hippogriff. Yeah. Yeah. It I freaks remember, him out. And creeps him out a little bit. He's like, "Master, what are you doing?" <laughs> I remembered the side story I want. Yeah. Or at least one of them, Cluricon and his nemesis, because That's I don't so like Cluricon. <laughs> I would. I would be fine reading the story where he is defeated by his nemesis. All right, carry on. <laughs> I love that his nemesis is a deer too. It's gonna fucking die to a deer. Jesus, humiliating shifting stag thing, really. But sure, yeah. Which was the boggart that talked to? What's your name? Yep, yep. Do you think oh, Morpheus would have let Fiddler's Green stay dead? I feel like he might not have. Well, which okay. I'm sorry. I'm still thinking about Clarkon's nemesis, which we saw the Daniel dream create, right? Or at least trick Clericon into creating. So he was there. Daniel, I don't know if he tricked him into it. No, he led him off the path as a cat. He did it. Yeah, okay. And then turns into Dream Daniel, and then the Nemesis is born. So Dream Daniel is the reason why. What is the the elf's name? I can't think Nuala. of her name. Nuala is the reason why Nuala called. Morpheus back to fairy. So Daniel caused Morpheus's death? That is something you should keep in your back pocket for when we talk about <laughs> Overture, okay. you said for the hey! 85th this podcast. There we go. Anyways, we're talking the banner, about the Mike's... banners flare, the trumpets go. <laughs> oh, he said Overture again. Overture. I promise it's not it's not meaningless there is actually like some cool payoff anyways we're talking about mike's original unique one of a kind question, question. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he made this yes. <laughs> yes suck i hate you both <laughs> anyways no i i think uh that the dreaming will be very much more act i don't want to say active because that implies the old dream wasn't doing his job he very uh, much was doing his job <laughs> he very much, that was the only, only that. Dream. but i think Dreams are going to be wilder. Like, I don't think he's... Uh, I, I, for some reason, I get the feeling that he's not going to be as... Rigid? What's, rigid? Uh, he's it's a totally new... Like, oh, first, he's inexperienced. So there's there's a whole whole bunch of learning he's got to do. So he's going to be a wild. He's got Matthew part. for that. It's all good. Yeah, he's a, he got a 20-year-old raven. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm not disparaging. <laughs> I, there's going to be a learning curve. And... I, I don't think he's going to be the same. I think there's going to be some some crit. Dreams are going to get nuts, y'all. Hold on to your butts. It is kind of weird that he just starts creating the same creatures or dreams or whatever over again. Like, Merv coming back yeah. was weird to me. Of like, oh hey. Oh, Merv. He's Merv turned a pet? Yeah. You guys I mean, saw like, that, right? That his name is Turnip. Oh, the, no, no, the and, one in the Shakespeare wait. one was a turnip. Yeah. <laughs> yep, it's Merv Turnip Head. I didn't, I didn't catch that. Oh, I'm sorry. At some point, Dream decided that turnips are not to be trusted. Turn Merv into a pumpkin. <laughs> there you go. All right. But it's like it's a new aspect of Dream and starts by just like remaking the same things. So that was kind of like honestly a little bit concerning <laughs> but i think over the course of the volume sort of like is learning the lesson that hey morpheus killed himself for a reason <laughs> don't don't do exactly what that guy did <laughs> tries to bring fiddler green back fiddler green's like uh n- nope i had a pretty decent end i live my life i'm good and then yeah he doesn't bring back the same griffin that was killed horrifically in the kindly ones he actually like reaches out to the queen of griffins to like recruit a new griffin which i thought was interesting yeah it also establishes that there are like other realms besides quote-unquote reality and the dream yeah waking yeah which i guess we kind of already knew what with fairy and everything but it's a thing that I forget sometimes. <laughs> I do also think it's interesting that Daniel's like design, the fact that he's wearing an all white 
like, I don't know if kimono is the right word for it, but like a samurai, like a Japanese influenced robe is what he wears, at least in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like that really cool splash, like almost full page image of Daniel sitting on his throne, which is real nice. Yeah. Definitely still distinctive. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Daniel's got style. He learned real quick. Uh, but I thought it was interesting because in, in Jap- Japanese, white is the color of death and not black. Huh. So I don't know if there's anything there that Gaiman washes this new dream in white after the previous dream dies. I don't know. Awesome. Maybe. I say there certainly could be something to that. For some reason, I get the get the feeling that this this game and fellow is illiterate. Okay. Literate. You think he's a reader? He can read. <laughs> yes, I do believe <laughs> some of these crazy things like that. I bet he's cracked a few books. Yes, I, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the dreaming's in for a new age. Do you think he'll get his mopey about having girlfriends? <laughs> Maybe I'll have boyfriends. Maybe I'll switch it up. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, it's kind of weird that it's always girlfriends. Now yeah. that you think about it. <laughs> An internal entity. I, th- I was surprised Hob did never try having a boyfriend. I think he says he does at some does point. He? Yeah, oh, okay. I don't remember if Go it's in this volume or a different one, but I think he actually he, he did <laughs> dabble. <Didn't work> <laughs> yeah. Got tired of it. Goes to run a fit around sound series and drinks himself to death. It's great. It did almost want me make me want to go to another friend fair. It's been a while. There's one down near you, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Bristol. Bristol Ren Fair. We'll do it. I'm seeing Daniel smile in this panel. That's a difference. Yeah, <laughs> right. We were home. We never do see Marpheus smile. I think we do, but not very often. And he and Matthew have a more friend like more friendly relationship than Boss more, employee, really? Yeah, really more good. like I don't know, respected, equal, to some degree. It's hard to say exactly how that translates into like what the dreaming will look like, though, because again, there are rules and responsibilities, and I think that still is probably part of his gig, <laughs> even if it's not as much a part of his gig <laughs> than it was when he was Morpheus. But yeah, and I hope I hope like the Daniel influence will last, but maybe like. As the eons go on, it'll just revert to a little bit. dream. So that's the thing, too, is like we've talked about how the endless are personifications of the thing, but are also influenced by the thing that they're personifications of, right? Like it's a weird cycle that we don't entirely understand how that works. Like, yeah. So is yeah. the fact that there's a new dream, like, is it our fault? <laughs> Did we do it? Did we drive Dream to suicide? To or? commit suicide? I think so, yeah. <laughs> I okay. think we did. Good. I blame Mike. Well, you guys dream, but it wasn't me. Oh, no, it's too late. I already blamed you. You can't blame me. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't, I don't even hardly ever dream. It's all hardly you ever. Well, that hardly said, ever. actually, this brings up the weird fan theory I stumbled into, which I feel like we should address before we put this volume to bed. Uh-huh. Is Morpheus actually dead? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. Why would you say otherwise? Well, who's walking with Hob and destruction in that last page of Hob's thing? Hob and destruction. Yeah, in the last page of the Hob um, story, he is dreaming, and destruction shows up with a beard. So it looks like some time has passed since he destruction had come to visit Daniel, and Morpheus is there. And if Morpheus, if like, if a version of Morpheus exists in the dreaming, does Morpheus not still exist? Because again, like, Abel mentioned that he's just a point of view. Like, I don't think he. I think that's probably just a reflection of. I don't think so. But if people man, do their existence, does he exist? No. Man. Okay. I don't no. think so. No, he's dead. He died. Otherwise, what the fuck's the point of all of it? If he's still alive, no. He's dead. Oh, okay, Fiddler's Green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how you would be. Mervyn died? He's alive? Okay. Does that, ruin, died. Does that ruin Mervyn's AK-47 yes. panel? It does, no, a no. little bit. I don't no. think it does, actually. But I am a, a child of the death and rebirth cycle of superhero comics, so... <laughs> <laughs> that would have to be my opinion, I think. 
I'm, I, yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> no, he's he's definitely dead. Short oh, answer, Mike. Is that the only instance, like the only evidence they pointed to in that Reddit thread that, oh, look, he met Hob well, I actually on read a it beach? When we were talking about the kindly ones, so it's been a little bit, but it was basically like part of it was talking about how Gaiman says it's the, the whole story is like Morpheus deciding, like, like realizing he has to change or die and then making a choice. And so theoretically, he could have just actually change i i honestly don't really b- believe the theory too so it makes it harder for me to argue because i think the morpheus we see wouldn't be able to do what destruction has done and, and also it's up. not like there's another destruction destruction just completely stepped like the existence of multiple versions of the same endless and this like that just doesn't make any sense to me that no <laughs> <laughs> no. You realize just by having this conversation that someone at DC is now having the discussion. Oh well, what if we do the new Fifty Two with <laughs> Sandman? And new 52? Restart it. Oh you god. I mean, they don't have new- to, right? Like, part of the reason the epilogues are here is because it shows like you can just dip back in and tell a Morpheus story if you want. You don't need to. You don't need to resurrect him. <laughs> I mean, there are like you pointed out, there are a lot of. Sandman universe comics that came after this and after Overture as well. So they're still telling oh, Sandman stories. Are there different endlesses in each of the DC universes? I don't think so, actually. I think but I'm not sure. The same? I, don't know. I think canonically there aren't. <laughs> we'll have to look at Dark Knight's Metal. <laughs> Put that on the Sandman reading list. Oh, Daniel, yeah. show, Daniel shows up in that. That's like a a crisis level crossover thing. No. <laughs> no. Also, I think approved by Mr. Gaiman. So Neil doesn't know what he's doing anymore. He's lost it. He's, he's lost. Really lost it. I don't think he has actually. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. So I haven't watched really well. the Netflix. I haven't watched the Netflix show yet. So maybe I'll get around to doing that sometime. He still lives in Northern Wisconsin. I don't I think, think so. I think he does. No. no, I think he moved back. Okay. Did you get the Wisconsin reference in this? One no, of the I books didn't. that one of the books that Rose Tyler got from her mother's Rose Tyler lol, by the way. <laughs> I just said Rose Tyler. Fuck <laughs> Rose Walker, no. Best companion. A... Yes, Rose Walker is the best companion. Fuck. No, Rose Walker got a Wisconsin like tourist book. I don't remember exactly, but it's like a book about I think it's probably about the the area that Neil Gaiman moved to. Well, I did notice that it's like Death Comes to I don't remember now. I'm just thinking of Death Comes to Door County, which I don't think is the book she mentions, but it's something. No, about it was like a yeah. It was the word Wisconsin was in <laughs> Sam Man of the Wake, so I took it. Take that, listeners that live elsewhere. <laughs> Come to Wisconsin. We drink, we eat cheese, we fart. Backers! With that, I guess, with that auspicious ending provided by Michael Drew himself, I think we will end our discussion of The Sandman, Volume 10. You did wake. apologize at the start, Pat. I think oh. you need to do it at the end, too, Mike. Get ready. <laughs> uh, as we've hinted at massively throughout this discussion, next time we'll be talking about Sandman overture the 11th volume of the same i don't know where they could put it but Aww. i think technically endless nights is volume 11 we discovered when we read endless nights like it's literally labeled volume 11 now which i don't know how i feel about that it doesn't, it doesn't feel good at the same time though if i was doing it i would probably label overture volume zero so i don't know how i feel about that either <laughs> then you would confuse people and they would read it first and spoil a bunch of stuff for the rest no because it's zero so, you should read one first what no, definitely don't read over two first. <laughs> the fact that you just said you read one before zero. Just... Yeah. You No, what? <laughs> yeah, volume zero. You so read you read first. one first? Yeah. How does that make end. sense? What? <laughs> what are you God, talking like about? Like you've never even seen a comic series that has a volume zero. <laughs> We did episode zero for this podcast. What are they yeah, supposed to listen to, to that? 
<laughs> they can't listen to it. Yet. Never. So we end the podcast. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, next time we'll be ending with Volume Zero, Salmon Overture, which I've read an issue of, Mike hasn't read ever, and Matt's read a couple times now. I read today. <laughs> so yeah, join us, join us next time, and hopefully, hopefully have some good discussions. Mike's going to have a humdinger of a question, so. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>